Yeah, check out the dash lit up at night. It's so cool. Got to get a little uh, tunnel sound action going here. See what she sounds like. <laughs> Pretty good. Not really exactly what it, I would expect out of a 57 Thunderbird, but I don't have that much experience with them, but I think it's cool. Look at that view across the hood. Awesome. Greeting automotive enthusiasts. Today we have for you a 1957 Ford Thunderbird, or better known as the Baby Bird, 55 to 57. This is a cool car. <laughs> uh, interesting story about these cars is my wife Becky, when she was in high school, she had a poster of a pink Thunderbird on her wall. That was her dream car as a kid, was a 57 Thunderbird. And now, as she, we're both older, I mean, she we still love the Thunderbird, but yeah, she would much rather have this one than a pink one. But you know, uh, <laughs> when you're a kid, you know that's kind of cute. And uh, you know, she loved pink back in the that was back in the '80s. You know, heck, I had a uh, I wore a pink tux, and she had a pink dress. We went to prom together, and uh, that was crazy. Her mother actually made her dress and my tux uh you will you, you wait till you see this picture but anyway so this car here uh is actually a three-speed manual transmission and if you look that is very rare um you know i kind of went to bring a trailer and kind of looked at comps on these cars and everything and you know bring a trailer only you know really kind of accepts the you know typically like some cars they don't even take it if it's an automatic you know in some certain examples and models but when i looked at all their cars they were almost i think i only found one manual and it was a basket case and uh all of them were automatic so i thought that was really cool and then after getting the car um the dynamics of driving the car I mean, these are cool cars, but I really like the manual transmission. I'm really surprised at how rare it is, but I guess it was kind of an upscale car, you know, and luxury touring type of car. I guess that was just the way they marketed the car, but it also has the electronic, factory electronic overdrive, which really transforms the car. Because when you're driving the car, um, you know, you go to third gear and, you know, you're doing 2,500 RPM at, 60 mile an hour um you know it's not wrapped out but you know you get up to 70 and it gets up there towards three grand and then you know it just doesn't feel as relaxing but you lift off the throttle and this rpms drop almost a thousand rpm so it's really amazing because uh, then you're doing like 1500 rpm at 60 miles an hour so then it just feels effortless and it just flows so well uh this car this color scheme i think um, I don't know that this is the exact gray, but I believe gray was an option uh, in 57. I don't know that it was in 55 or 56, but uh, I have seen other gray and red cars like this. I've seen a couple of others. Um, so this car actually, I didn't even realize it um, at first, but when I was uh, flipping the rear seat forward, I see that behind the rear seat on uh, the interior that this car's actually a uh, originally in a red car so red car red interior um, but to be honest with you even if I were to you know, it is a good you know nice driver you know it's a, a quote-unquote 10 footer or whatever and we'll zoom in on the car so you can see what I'm talking about but um, but even if I were to repaint this car um, I would go back with the gray um, I just love the gray and the red and we've got history we actually went down uh, to Dallas a few years ago and toured uh, Amos Mentor. Uh, his, uh, he is the Thunderbird guy. His cars are the ones that all his cars have sold to celebrities and they've brought the big money across the block at Barrett Jackson. He is the fun Thunderbird guy. And we toured his facility. We actually sold him a car, believe it or not. Cool story in itself. But uh, it was a, uh, it was actually, he paid for it, uh, but it was for a friend of his. It was our 67 Volkswagen Beetle. And uh, funny story with that. I don't know if I'll get into it here. But uh, I sold him a car, so then we went down there and visited his place. But he had all these Thunderbirds lined out, and they looked 
so cool like all these colors and just all the colors of the rainbow but he actually had a gray one and uh of all the cars that we looked at we we're like if we were to pick a car out of here uh, we would have picked the gray one with the red interior you know and this was a few years ago and uh that was just uh, of all of those cars that was our favorite car and uh and then lo and behold you know i find our own gray uh, thunderbird so uh, that was a really cool experience. Um, but this one does have the 312 uh, V8 in it, which was the larger motor. Uh, I believe it's the single four barrel carburetor. I know I think they had a, a two or three carb setup option for it or something like that. And then, and then above that, then they had the supercharged model, which is really, really rare, which would you know effectively triple the price of the car probably. But uh, but you know I just love the way this one's spec'd. I mean you know because it's very reasonable price, it's gorgeous looking, and it drives fantastic. I mean I just don't even you know I mean if you're an avid collector and you just really want the the nice. But I mean you know these cars are still bringing sixty, seventy, eighty thousand dollars for you know for certain examples. Uh, they used to bring over a hundred. I think they've dropped a little bit. Um, but uh, yeah, this car is just so much car for the money where it stands right now. And um, but let's go ahead and we'll kind of zoom in here and keep talking about the car and we'll show you what we're talking about on the car. So if you'll look at the paint here and you can even see kind of in the light, you know, it's a little splotchy you, per se, you know what I mean? Kind of like you can just see how the paint's not laid down perfectly. And you know, I'm not gonna go every detail, but, uh, but you'll kind of get the general idea. Um, you know, it just and it looks it looks really good going down the road looks great But you look close to it and you can see but you know, but it's priced accordingly and uh, But it's still a really good car. It's a really solid car. Somebody really loved this car. I got it um, Out of Ohio actually and and uh, another dealer had it and he bought it from an older gentleman who he actually went to his house to buy another car and saw this one and bought both of them and uh, he had it and I saw this and Kind of just had to have it myself. So you can see here the lens. There's a lot of originality to this car. There's a lot of quote unquote patina, which I think is really cool. Um, but we'll kind of go across the car. I'm guessing maybe they put new bumpers on it because the bumpers are, are just absolutely pristine. They're super nice. And I'm guessing the good thing about these cars, I think you can get most of all the parts for them. Uh, but it looks like, you know, so the lens just shows some age, but the bumper looks really nice. And if you look at the chrome right there, see that has more imperfections in it. Uh, still looks really nice. There's our Thunderbird emblem. Here's our little egg crate grill. Little classic Thunderbird club badge is pretty cool. But this car is really, really solid. I think it's an older restoration. Um, but, you know, so it's got some cosmetics, but mechanically it is really, really good. So kind of keep coming here. There's a little scratch right here that's kind of touched up. I did have Van Gogh do a little polish on it, a little bit of touch up, um, and, it, and it really looks great. I mean, it really shines up really nice. But you can see like in the paint right there, yeah, you see the little speckles in the paint. It's kind of hard to show some of that in the camera sometimes versus the naked eye, but, but you get the point, you know. You can kind of see that right there. So, little chrome grills here, the Thunderbird emblem. Uh, it has real wire wheels on it, and they're in really nice shape. There's some black coming off there. Actually, I think I did that with the pressure washer, so uh, it should be pretty easy to get in there and touch that up. White wall tires are really nice. The tread is really good. This thing goes down the road. Um, I'm telling you, this thing will do 100 miles an hour <laughs> with ease. I had a little incident here. Um, I got a phone call from a neighbor that said, there's a huge grass fire and it's headed towards your house. And I was basically out by the wizard's place and uh, on the back roads, I was literally doing about 100 and it would have gone a lot faster, but that was as fast as I kind of wanted to go on a car of this age, but it will go down the road. Looking down the side there, it's not perfect. There's some little waviness here in the quarter panel. Man, it's kind of hard to see at the at the lip. I mean, but it's like I said, you got to really get kind of close and 
Here's the door handle and the locks. We do have, obviously have the hard top for the car and uh, show you some pictures, you know, with the hard top on it. Uh, I'm not gonna put the hard top on for the video. There's some pitting in the chrome here. So, you know, obviously that's probably the original mirror. Cool little sticker there. The windshield does have some issues. It's got a little bullseye right there and it has been filled and touched up. So it's not really gonna get any worse, but you can't really make it any better either. A uh, little wiper mark. How do I show you that? See a little wiper mark right here. So a little wiper mark on the windshield. Um, I don't know. I mean, you could put a new windshield in it and because it's got plenty of the pits and scratches and everything. So you could put a new windshield in it, but then sure enough, when you do that and you get a rock, a truck catch a rock and fly up and break your new windshield, it's just like, so frustrating little wiper mark there so in a way it's kind of nice you can kind of drive this and not worry so much these are super cool right here driving the car wouldn't even realize how these work but there's a lever inside and you flip it out and it pops out and uh and uh it it ram airs at your feet and it takes in a lot of air i'm gonna go ahead and show you so here is the uh here's the little lever right here and you just flip it up Oop. okay and then <laughs> there's your forced air induction right there. Check that out. <laughs> Just a simple barn door and it works fantastic. When you crack that guy open, I mean, you get a lot of air through the car. So super cool. Love the engineering of old, you know? So we've got a little pinstripe down the side. I mean, obviously that's added on, not really a factory thing. And then the factory color, what I would consider the factory color from this car is a little bit darker than this. But I, I really like this color. It looks super nice. Here's the wheels again. The wire wheels are in really, really good shape. Those obviously probably been put on new when it was restoration was done. And then where the hard top is, it had an old rubber seal and it kind of got some putty on here. That's just the old, it was stuck on there. So uh, I need to soften that up and get that up and then touch that up a little bit. But there's some, you know, it kind of happens, you know, there's some damage around this from the hard top being on it. So we'll make it look a little bit better, kind of clean it up and touch it up, but, but it's not going to be perfect for sure. Looking across the deck lid and then you can see this is speckles and the lights are showing it. They might even be actually showing it more than what it really looks like you get it out in the sunlight and it looks really nice i mean you don't really unless you get up close to the car you don't really notice it and there's some more of that splotchiness like i was telling you so drive this thing and enjoy it tail lights are really nice lenses are good now again we have just you know an immaculate rear bumper so I'm speculating that they put new bumpers on and, uh, and then they decided to route, see the, the exhaust actually routes out here and there's actually exhaust in there. You see how there's actually a pipe and there's actually a way to connect it. And for whatever reason, they decided to bypass that and drop down with a tailpipe. I'm guessing because um, with this, you know, it would get soot around the, around the uh, uh, muffler, probably get some soot on the tail lights. You know, when you turn them down like that, you're not gonna do that. But to be real honest with you, I don't care. Uh, I think it looks really cool. I'm not a big fan of that. So I'm probably going to uh, change that and have the exhaust routed through the bumper. I just think it would kind of clean it up. It just looks a little redundant right there with two exhaust outlets. That's just my personal opinion. Here's our rear Thunderbird emblem. Here's our right rear tail light. So there's the bumper again. Tag. And then there's this. I'm not sure if this is original or not, to be honest with you. Don't really know what that is. Well, but I mean, it's pitted. So, I mean, that's probably the original. Well, there's an antenna up there. So, not sure what that's all about. But it's there. <laughs> okay. And here, here's where our gas lid is. Look, it's kind of cool. It actually flips up. You know. And, uh, and then in, on this quarter panel here, I do see some cracking right here. So I'm guessing there's a little bit of filler in here would be my guess. I mean, I don't know if that's just the paint, but so there's a little bit of, uh, I don't feel anything on the back side. feels pretty good on the back side, but, but anyway, there's that. 
There's the rear wheel. Looks like a little bit of, little bit of filler right there. Passenger side, looking down the right side. So that that's probably the worst of it right there. And then the passenger side. Overall, I mean, it's a pretty straight car. If you repainted it, I mean, it could definitely be improved, but it's not. But it, it really presents pretty well as it is. <laughs> Clifford Security. That's from the 80s right there, isn't it? 80s, 90s. nice so let's go ahead and pop the hood and take a look under there we got the hood raised up now and let's go ahead and take a look inside of here it's a little dusty under here actually the, it was immaculate when i got it i mean i say immaculate it was clean <laughs> but it's really clean under the hood um and it has kind of a little undercoating or something on the hood it's not a bad idea Guessing obviously they added that on there, but that would actually help even, I think, uh, the heat and the temperature on it. So, but it presents really well underneath. We got new shocks on the car, put those on there. The rear was, uh, one of the rears felt like it was bad, so it was kind of pitching a little bit. But so check it out, love the Thunderbird covers. But it looks really good under here. I mean, this thing runs like you fire this thing up, there is zero smoke. The cold start is perfect. So obviously when this thing was restored, this engine, I'm gonna say this engine was rebuilt because it absolutely runs perfect. Temperature's dead on. That fan does a great job. Radiator looks new. Come around to the other side here. Hey, let's do this just for the heck of it. Uh, you can't see. <laughs> Coming around the other side, but you can just see it looks really nice underneath the hair. Little paint chip there. But you see, they did a really good job. I mean, they they painted. I didn't even know that it was a color change, and uh, you know, because they really did a good job of of uh, you know, obviously when they had the motor out and stuff, and they had this car stripped down. They did the whole thing. Steering on the car is good. Got our diehard battery. There's our single four barrel carburetor. What do we got there? Is it a Holly? Looks like Holly. We're on the other side. Uh, I think you might be able to see. Yep, Holly. All right, and the heater, everything functions perfectly. The heater blows hot, and I mean, it's amazing how well everything really works. Wipers work, it's all good. Let's take a look at the trunk. <laughs> Love the old uh, keys, check them out. Look like original keys, old Thunderbird keys. So square ones for the ignition, and this round one here, is for the trunk. Flip up the little guy right here. And oh, I'm gonna have to use two hands here. And pop the trunk. Okay. Presents very well into the trunk. The springs uh, maybe need to be tightened up a little bit. I mean, it stays open, but it kind of doesn't stay all the way to the top. I'm not sure how that's supposed to function here. So they sprayed. Inside, everywhere, inside the trunk. The trunk presents really well. Nice new carpet, uh, spare tire. What's really nice is in 57, they moved the spare tire. They used to have the Continental kit, you know, on the 55 and 56. Um, I really like the cleaner look of the 57 personally and the way they put the uh, spare in the trunk. I really, personally, I prefer the 57. I think it's the best looking one now here's what's in the trunk also so there is a hard top hoist that they uh 
somebody had bought for this. So it comes with a brand new hard top hoist, which is really, really nice because it's <laughs> pretty big and bulky. bulky. There's a big car cover for it. And then uh, in the truck here, it's got original carpet, dad's old stick shift boot, <laughs> and new speedometer cable. So um, it's kind of interesting. I hadn't even really looked at this until just now, but uh, it's kind of cool to see the old original carpets. And uh, you know, they're really, I mean, number one, the reproduction carpets look, I mean, pretty much identical. And then uh, the uh, original carpets are really not too bad of shape. Kind of cool. So anyway, all of this will come with the car. So let's go ahead now and take a tour of the interior. And on the hood, here's here's how you do the hood right here. So it's spring loaded and it all works perfect. Um, and then just take it up here about to about 12 inches and just drop it and it closes perfect. So like they said, the interiors are, th are really, I think there's a lot of originality in this interior. So I think this was a really pretty good car before it had its rest restoration. But these door panels, um, I mean, if you look at this machine turned aluminum, um, and that all looks original, you know, because there's some wear to it. Uh, door panels, I'm guessing those are reproduction because they're really nice. And the top pad, maybe the top pad's original. But I'm just looking at this, I mean, it looks pretty crisp and pretty fresh. And so I think that the pad and the armrest may be original because, see, they're, they're just a slightly different color. But that's, again, this is all my speculation. So, and you look in here, it's like I said, you don't see any red. I mean, they changed the jams. They changed everything. Um, here's a aftermarket, or not, but here's a floor mat. And then underneath the floor mat, here's the carpets. I would pull it out here. So there's your heel pad, you know, and look at your original pedals. You know, I, I really don't know how many miles are on this car, but when you look at certain clues, I don't think it's, you know, I don't think it's a ton. There's our high beam there. There's our parking brake. Slide it in. Because if you just look at, there's the, the things that are original, and you look at the patina and the age of them, they, uh, they look really good. So like this dashboard, for example, you know, it looks really old. I mean, look how it's wrinkled right there, you know, uh, and you look across that dash. So, I mean, the dash doesn't look replaced and it looks to be in really good condition. So, and like even these sun visors, look at these. Those are old. I mean, you could tell by the color and then even just the design, you know, and just, you know, brand new parts just aren't the same, but you can just see there's some patina on those. So, you know, and that all being said, when I look at this seat, you know, I mean, I don't know, I can't confirm, but there's a lot of patina to this seat in a good way. You know, is that the original seat cover? I mean, if so, this was a really, and it still is a really nice car. So, some interesting stuff. Slide in here. You gotta slide your leg under the steering wheel before you get in, otherwise you can't get in there. But so like here, if you check out the steering wheel, the little plastic, and then just look at the gauges in here. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit, but just look at the needles and the condition and everything. That all looks original. And what are we showing on miles here? So I'm gonna say it's 111,000 miles. That would be, I think, I think a well cared for 100,000 miles. That 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 would uh, make sense to me. Oh, zoom back out here. Looks like somebody wrapped the steering wheel. I doubt that was original, but I, I'm not sure. But I'm guessing it was not. So if that's the case, because you know, that does kind of match the seat leather. So maybe that was recovered years ago. Here's a little radio. <laughs> I mean, it's digital. 
So it's kind of weird in that way, but the color sure does match good and it plays fantastic. Um, so, I mean, I kind of like it. And then despite it's like a little Thunderbird emblem in here, all the gauges work. The only thing that doesn't work is the clock. The clock does not work, but all the gauge, generator light, oil light. Uh, and then here's a fresh air vent. And when you pull that, it's another place for fresh air. And when you pull those, there's one on each side. And uh, it, uh, yeah, and it really, it really blows the air. Here's our wipers, cigarette lighter. And the temperature controls are really cool and it all works really well. Um, I mean, when you turn the heat on, you get a lot of heat and then you got your blower motor right there. So kind of looking over here to the right side, again, kind of the same theme on the passenger side as the driver's side. Go ahead and open this glove box here. See in there, looks good inside the glove box. And locking glove box there. I forgot what that sticker is. Some little, maybe some parts, sources on that, which is kind of cool. And a cigarette lighter. Pretty clean. And then here is our overdrive dude right there. Oops. So I had not even messed with that because it's working right now. And so honestly, I haven't even pulled on that because I don't, <laughs> I'm not sure how to operate it and it's working. So I just don't want to mess with it. I love this here. Look at the chrome little pedestal mirror there. Hello. <laughs> These little wing windows are nice to deflect the air when you're going down the road. So let me slide back out of this seat. Pull it up here, let you look behind. Now here's where, like I said, I discovered uh, the original color of the car. So there's, that's why I'm calling it a color change because I opened it up and I saw that. And this car does not have the soft top. You can buy, they do sell, you know, you can buy reproduction soft tops and everything. Uh, you know, it is available, but this one, for whatever reason does not have the soft top so it's either a convertible or the hard top and it does have belts too i tucked them in behind there but they're really nice lap belts and they work really well i just tucked them in behind the seat for the video so it in pictures and everything because it you know it looks prettier without the big ugly seat belts flopping right there so let's kind of do this here. Take a little peek underneath the car. We'll just start right here. Pretty clean under there. There's your tire well. Pretty solid car. Again, the car is dirtier <laughs> than when I bought it because I've been driving it. Cars are meant to be driven. And that looks really good. One thing I want to do real quick that I did forget was there was a data tag. Oh, well, there's the horn. <laughs> horn works. There was a data tag under here I want to zoom in on for you. All right, well, let's do the best part. Let's jump in this baby bird and take it for a spin. We got the T-Bird pulled out on a beautiful October evening. A uh, nice fall evening here. It's probably, I don't know, 60 degrees still. So uh, really just wonderful time to be in a convertible. My 
favorite time of the year, favorite time of the day. Here we go. We'll take it out on our little loop here. So the, the, the car runs fantastic. The engine, uh, clutch, uh, brakes are great. We put new shocks on the car. Um, first gear's not synchronized. Uh, one thing that, uh, you know, a little bit of a, uh, just an age and wear issue, the, um, the second and third gear synchro, uh, you kind of had to be kind of slow with them, um, kind of to wait on them, but I did actually have the tranny fluid changed, and then they put in a friction modifier, um, so it's actually much better. Uh, so the gear changes and stuff up, you know, the up changes are really good, down changes, you know, you just gotta be slow and wait for it. I mean, so I mean, if you really wanted to, you know, get it 100%, you'd probably have to send the tranny in uh, to, uh, you know, have the synchros replaced. The, the gears and everything, it's perfect. But, you know, this car's kind of a cruiser car, so, you know, I think for me, like the way it is, it, it got probably 80% better when we changed the fluid. So I'm really happy with it right now. Um, but just kind of telling you about the car, you know, and what it's the issues or whatever are. But, uh, and like I said, first gear's not synchronized, so you pretty much gotta come to a stop for first gear. But the thing is though, is it's so low, really, unless you're coming to a dead stop, just uh, leave it in second gear. I'll put the window up, and see if it helps with the wind here. All right, let's give her the beans. <laughs> That's fantastic. That, that was the great surprise when I bought this car, was I expected it to be, you know, just kind of a real pokey, you know? And uh, this thing, this thing gets up and goes really well. Get up on the highway here. Look at that. off the gas and get a gas get the overdrive kicks in and I'm doing uh, 60 mile an hour right now and I'm at about 1500 rpm just fantastic on the highway and it's automatic electronic so it just and there's the lever for it right down here but it just automatically engages when you let off the gas so it's basically like having four speeds with force with fourth gear being a massive overdrive so it works really really well I love it. You hear that little grind there going back into second gear. Going kind of, I was really going too fast and kind of forcing it in there. But thing is, like I said, you don't really need first gear because it's so torquey. And then all you got to do is just, you know, unless you're coming to a complete stop, you never really go to first gear. That's second gear's plenty and it's got so much torque. So there's the second gear. And I love that this has the factory tag too. Such a cool car. I mean, these cars didn't have air conditioning. That wasn't even an option, but you got the big uh, scoops on the side there that pull the air in and it does an amazing job. Um, you know, and this car's got manual windows, but I mean, it's I mean, it's right here and I can reach over here. So really power, re power windows would be kind of redundant. So I mean, it's, you know, there's, I don't know, there's not really a lot of options on this car, but the climate control works great. You put it to heat, and I mean, you get a lot of heat, so it works really well. Pull our lights on there. But this car is just a really good driver. Um, you know, everything works, turn signals, all the gauges, all the lights, the radio. His partner's done. You know, the radio uh, plays really nice. <laughs> when I get into this car, I... Uh, I run an FM modulator, and then uh, I pump my uh, Spotify through the through the radio, and I put on 50s rock and roll, and it's just fantastic. All right, let's uh, let's let it roll here. Shipper and and uh, it came in on the shipper and and 
I was just so happy with the way it run and, and I just really couldn't have been happier with the car. And I knew the, you know, the paint was driver quality paint. I knew it wasn't perfect, but I didn't know, you never know quite about the mechanics. And this thing came in and the mechanics were just wonderful. So um, that's, I was super happy. And I daily drove this when I unloaded the truck, I literally, that day I drove it for like a week solid. And uh, over the couple of weeks, I put over a thousand miles on this car. <laughs> you know, I mean, I've taken it out of town. I've just driven the heck out of it. Me and Becky have done a bunch of miles on this car. It's so comfortable. I just absolutely love it. I like these windows and, and the little uh, side went, you know, to deflect the wind and everything. But it's fun. It's a lot of fun. enjoyed the ride along in this Thunderbird you know it's just like you see these at auctions and you see these collections but you just never see any on the road and I can't just begin to tell you you know how much um, I, you know, I get attention or, or respect this car gets driving around how many thumbs up how many honks I get it's really kind of cool I just like that you know because it just shows the appreciation for the car you know what I mean it just, uh, it just shows, you know, people really have a lot of love and, re and respect for this car. And, I mean, I, I always have, and I just, you just don't see them, so. Well, hey, well, thanks for riding along. Look us up on uh, YouTube, EuroAsian Auto, on EuroAsian Bob on YouTube. Uh, like and subscribe on the channel if you would there. And uh, definitely leave uh, comments there. We'd love to read the comments. And uh, uh, hit that uh, notification button, and that way, Whenever we get new cars in and uploaded, you'll get a notification, so you'll be one of the first ones to see it, because you never know when we might have your next dream car. Have a great day, and happy motoring.